Welcome to this video on the Groovy Syncussion Plus Percussion Synthesizer by Blue Lantern Modules. Inspired by the now highly sought after Pearl Syncussion Drum Synthesizer from the 1970s, this Eurorack module takes the original syncussion design with some original circuits, such as the trigger and envelope generators, to new levels with the mixer section and the addition of the shimmer metallic generator using XOR ring mod from CMOS chips. In this video, I'll overview each of the six sections of the module, and then we'll go back and walk through each and every knob, switch, input, output, and button, and see how it all works together. You can skip to any section of the video using the time codes here. The Syncussion Plus is a very powerful and widely customizable percussion voice. Though inspired by the original Pearl Syncussion, it breaks free from the presets of the original by opening up the oscillator mixer here for more manual control. We also have the addition of the shimmer section here for more versatility to the sound. And though we only have one drum channel on this instead of two like the original Syncussion, I think through sheer power and flexibility, you won't really miss that second channel on this module. This module is great for making any kind of kick or tom sound you can imagine, and awesome for metallic percussion like hi-hats and cymbals. But where I think this module really shines is in making unique percussion sounds that you wouldn't associate with any kind of physical drum. This is a 27 HP module broken up into about six sections and comes equipped with eight inputs for various CV control, including volt per octave. You have a trigger and audio output, 26 knobs and seven switches to control various parameters, an LED for the LFO rate and envelope trigger, and then a push trigger button. As far as the sections, we have the main controls, the mixer section, the VCO section, shimmer section, LFO section, and the pitch envelope section. Then we have our various inputs and outputs. To first set this up before walking through the sections, I turned every single knob all the way counterclockwise. The bottom four switches here I set to their off position. This switch here I set to trigger input, the top one set to static, and this one over here set to accent. This I think will best show how the succussion works as we walk through each of the sections. Right now I have the audio output in this blue cable going into the oscilloscope. The red cable here is a trigger input, which is going out and into the trigger input on the Syncussion Plus. The first section we'll look at here are the main controls. First on the top left here, we have our master audio output, which we'll turn all the way up right now. Then we have our decay knob, which is the decay for the envelope caused by the trigger in the module. So every time this LED lights up, it's triggering the decay of this envelope. This envelope controls the pitch and the VCA on each hit. Next, we have the VCA offset, which goes from all the way open to closed, actually here at this dot. And then we could actually close it more for a bit more subtle percussion sounds. Next, we have the trigger sense knob, which senses our trigger from no triggers when all the way off to hard, heavy hits when the trigger sense is all the way high. These switches here, I'll talk about a little bit later when we get into triggering. The second section we'll look at is pretty simple. It's the mixer section here. It's kind of the main hub of all the sounds of the module. We have control over VCO1, VCO2, noise, and shimmer, and a little bit of sample and hold control here. For VCO1, here I've opened up my VCA and turned the tune knob up here so we can hear the oscillator. We can see we have a nice triangle wave when the switch is up. When it's in the center, it is off. And it is a square wave when the switch is down. But we can see there's a little bit of an angle to that square wave that gives it a little bit of extra bite, in my opinion. Next, we have oscillator 2, which this knob just controls the level of it. We cannot change the waveform. 
but we could adjust the pitch, though the pitch is tied to oscillator 1, and we'll get into that in a second. This oscillator is always a triangle wave, as we can see here, and that's about it for oscillator 2. Then we have our noise level, just general noise. We have our shimmer control, which adjusts our shimmer level into the mixer. And then here we have a master switch, which controls whether this knob is activated or not, which is sample and hold applied to the pitch of each hit. So when the switch is on, this knob is active. When the switch is down, it's as if the knob is off. And we'll go into the oscillator section here. We'll first start by turning on the triangle wave on VCO1, and I'll turn on VCO2. First, we have our master tune, which is a coarse tune, which goes from extremely high frequencies to basically LFO levels. We then have a fine tune knob, which fine tunes the pitch on oscillator one only. It's a great way to tune together or detune your oscillators. We also have individual trim pots for VCO1 and VCO2, so you could really fine tune each pitch. We have our spread knob here, which here you could better see how the fine tuning can come in. Our spread knob here affects both pitches in opposite directions. And it does one way for one, and another way for the other, and then the opposite when we go the other direction for the spread. You could hear that better when I turn off oscillator two. So this is only oscillator one on. It goes up that way, and it goes down this way. It's a great way to get some nice sub oscillator levels with a higher pitched hit in there as well. Listen oscillator two, and we could hear it goes the opposite direction. So now I'm going to close our VCA and I'm going to start introducing triggers into the module via the trigger input. And here we could really hear how the spread will affect the sound. And now the pop introduces a higher frequency transient to each hit, giving it more pop, which you can hear better when I have the pitch a little bit lower. You get the more higher pitched click pop sound. And again, we have the sample and hold knob which we can turn up and it'll add sample and hold values to the pitch of each hit. But it's not doing anything right now because it is turned off in the mixer section. So we turn the switch up and each hit, we get a totally different pitch applied by the sample and hold circuit. The next section we'll look at here is the shimmer section which is based on Blue Lantern's CMOS effects processor unit, which utilizes three oscillators that XOR ring modulate each other. Here, I've turned the shimmer control all the way up, and I'll introduce our drum pattern. Here, all the way on the left, we have our master frequency for all three oscillators. It's not as coarse or broad as the, the tune knob, but it's pretty wide. Then we have our X frequency, our Y oscillator frequency, and our Z oscillator frequency. And here we have the envelope coming from our trigger envelope, which introduces depth amount Pretty touchy, and you can't really do much 
in the higher levels from what I've gotten so far, but in these really subtle lower levels you could get some really interesting effects. And then we also have our sample and hold depth here, which is tied to the sample and hold circuit for the pitch, but this applies to the depth of the shimmer. And we have yet another modulator to the depth here, which is our LFO level, or our input here. When it's turned all the way left, it's disabled, or if we have something plugged in here, it goes to that. But we turn it up and it introduces the LFO to the shimmer depth. Here we can see the LFO is going really slow and it's low so we're not hearing anything. If I speed the LFO up, we can hear it and it's audio modulating the ring modulation. Okay, this next section we kind of touched on before, but it's the LFO section, which is basically these three knobs and this switch here. This knob here, as we discussed before, is the frequency of our LFO. We can see the speed and amplitude based on the LED level. Here we can frequency modulate the LFO into our oscillators. We can use a triangle wave LFO. Here, I'll turn on our beat. And increase the amplitude of that. Or we can make it a square wave. In addition to that, I'm going to turn that off for right now. In addition to this, we could also AM ring the VCA with our LFO. So we turn this knob up and the VCA is opening up, or the LFO, sorry, is opening up the VCA. And if we go to high enough levels, I'm going to turn off our triggers here. We can actually self-trigger this unit. I'm going to just play with the frequency here and open up the VCA here. And we could actually push it to where it self triggers there. And that's what happens when it kind of goes crazy every once in a while when you're playing around with the knobs. It's self triggering. And what's interesting is it's actually sending a voltage out from that trigger input. But you can get some really interesting effects, especially if you're using this as kind of a complex oscillator of sorts and not as a drum oscillator. By keeping the VCA open all the time, you can really play with the self-triggering and stuff to make some really interesting effects with your oscillator. take a look at the pitch envelope section, which is this decay knob, the sweep knob, and this switch here. Start our pattern. And to start, I'm going to turn our noise and shimmer all the way off. I'm going to turn VCO2 all the way up. I'll turn off sample and hold so we don't hear any pitch stuff there. Um, I'm going to turn off the mod LFO. So now all we hear is our pitch envelope. So right now, this switch is set to off, which means that these two knobs are disabled, and it's just giving us a general downward sweep with the decay. But when we switch this to rise, you can see right now we have the same effect, but now when we play with the decay and the sweep knob, Decay indicates the time for it to do the sweep, and the sweep is our pitch change amount from higher 
to less. And here we could see we could get a rising and falling sound in one envelope. See fall, where we have a falling envelope. Same thing here with the sweep as the rise. It indicates how low the fall goes. So we can get some really deep kick sounds with this. Again with it off. These don't do anything. Give it the rise one more time. And that is about it for the pitch envelope. Okay, now that we've looked at most of these knobs and switches, let's take a look at the inputs and outputs. First, the input that we've been using this whole time, the trigger input for the concussion, which receives trigger inputs, obviously. But we also have a second trigger input with the piezo. This one, though, is always hitting at 100%, so it's actually quite a bit louder than the trigger input. So it's great if you want those really tough accent notes or something like that. The trigger input is a bit more unique, and we'll circle back to that. Next, we have our volt per octave input, which is a typical volt per octave that controls both oscillators. This is great for using this as a complex oscillator, or for tuning your tom sounds and things like that. We also have a CV input for the VCA here, which has a level knob here, and it opens up our VCA when we have voltage present in our input. We have an accent and AM switch here. When in accent mode, this works like a typical VCA would with plugging in your envelope to the VCA. In AM mode, it actually will open up your VCA when it hits negative voltage, giving it a kind of through zero oscillator kind of effect. I touched on this a little bit earlier, where we introduce the LFO to the shimmer here. We could actually override the LFO with whatever input we input here. And the amount will be affected by this knob here. We then have FM both frequency modulation for both oscillators with an attenuator here. We then have a CV input for the LFO speed, which is really great for making your hits more lively and unique and changing. And then we also have an amp decay CV input, which adjusts our master decay here. For the outputs, we have our main audio output here. And then we also have our trigger output. And we have our trigger out here, where you can see we get triggers out each time this is triggered. We can get some really interesting triggers when we do that self-triggering that I showed earlier with the frequency in AM ring through the VCA. So you can see here, we're getting a multitude of trigger outputs because it is self-triggering. Okay, now that we've looked at all the inputs and outputs, we're gonna circle back to the trigger input because it's very unique. Right now, I have general triggers just going in and triggering this concussion. But now we can look at these switches here. We have our pitch envelope static dynamic switch, which we switch to dynamic. You can listen to the pitches here, which I'll turn off this sample and hold with that switch. And turn off this shimmer sample and hold. So the changes that we hear, actually I'll turn off this LFO as well. So the changes we hear are gonna be from this dynamic. So you could hear how the pitch kind of changes a bit, and it responds more to the velocity of the input in the trigger, which we'll get into in a second. 
Now I have a general gate plugged into this trigger input here. So you can see when I hit it and when I release. So we look at this input here, we have our trigger input and then the other setting is AC, which I believe stands for alternating current. When we switch it to this, our concussion will trigger when we hit our gate high. And then if you look at this LED here again, when the gate goes low, we get another hit, but we don't hear anything. You could hear what's going on a little bit better when I open up the VCA all the way. You could hear that second hit when I let go. And this is a great way, especially if you have a really short trigger, is to get that nice, a nice doubling up effect with your drum. I now have some sample and hold values going into the concussion with this set to AC. So now every time the value goes up or down, it is going to trigger the concussion. But anytime it goes up, it's going to trigger it so we can hear it. And when it goes down, it's going to do those more percussive backbeat ghost noise, ghost note sounds. We could hear them more when we have the decay all the way open. And now we could hear when we switch to dynamic, it'll really respond more to these different values. So you can see with sample and hold values going into the trigger, and then we could have other triggers going into the piezo, we could get a really percussive, human velocity sensitive drum. Oh! <laughs> 